What's up, y'all? You tuned into KEXP. We are a listener powered radio station in Seattle, broadcasting 24 7 with music from all genres, plus tons of exclusive live performances. Now, more than ever, we need music to keep us connected and power us through the hard times. So, thank you for joining us. This is live on KEXP at home. My name is Larry Mizell Jr., I'm the host. Um, today, I'll be talking to Naeem. We just released his new album, Startisha. Naeem, what's good? What's up, Larry? How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, you know, good as can be. You know, it's good to be uh, working from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I see you're in the crib. I see DMX over your shoulder, Guardian Angel. <laughs> yeah, it's my Guardian Angel, my spirit animal, you know. <laughs> Most definitely. Keeps all the bad spirits away. Yeah, with the single bark. <laughs> so you're in LA, right? Yeah, I'm in LA. Okay. Whereabouts my are new, you? My new home over on the east side, kind of like okay. in Lincoln Heights. Word, word. I like it over there. Okay. That's what's up. And uh you're originally from Baltimore. Yeah. And uh Be more moved to Be more. And uh and then you ended up in Philly. Uh and if I'm not mistaken, that's where the world first heard you as part of Spank Rock when you came out in, was that 2006, the first album came out? Yeah, the first album, Yo, 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 came out 2006. Um, I made that with my homie, Alex Efton. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we were like going back between Philly and, and Brooklyn. It was pretty, okay. pretty good times. Oh, dope. And that kind of like the sounds of these different cities and all these dance styles and production styles that were kind of emerging all showed up in that record and was like a really like kind of represented that moment really well. Um, how much of that was kind of like your individual trajectories coming from the different places y'all from at the time? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, Alex is from Baltimore too. I'm from Baltimore. Okay. He was in New York. I was in Philly. We um we just when we were making music, you know, like the the whole Brooklyn scene was kind of going crazy. You know, LCD sound system and like the Rapture. So we were bringing a lot of that post punk and and house vibes mm -hmm. and things like that. But then you know, like the the rap spin, we really wanted to dive back into stuff we listened to growing up in Baltimore. So we really start bringing a lot of Baltimore club sounds into it too. Right on. And. Uh, your newest record, Startisha, this is your first under your your own, your government name, Naeem. Yeah, I had to, had to, had to do it to him. <laughs> I had to give that government <laughs> name. <laughs> right. Um, and it seems to be your most personal work to date. Is that intentional along with the, the name change? Yeah, it was, it was intentional to make the album. Um like, you know, as personal as, as it could be. I'm yeah. really like closed off. So I mean, I still like a lot of lies in the album, but <laughs> it still come from a nice, <laughs> like <laughs> a nice, sure. um from a very real, real place in my heart. So, um, right. you know, uh, yeah, I had, I had to really like force myself to, to break through a couple walls to get there. That's what's up. Well, it definitely feels like an arrival and like a, a rebirth Congrats on the record. Um, I wanted to talk to you about this first song, Stone Harbor. I yes, think yes. this was like you wanting to finally write a love song. Yeah. So yeah. That, that has to be part of that, you know, personal stuff kind of really breaking through. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, like, I don't know why I thought this, but like, I, you know, I forgot that you could writing a love song was even possible. <laughs> you know, we were just like so yeah. focused in the club and wilding out. Um, but right. all my favorite, all my favorite songs are, are love songs, you know. So I really wanted to kind of like make sure I didn't miss the opportunity to do that. This one I focused on my boyfriend Scott, um, named it after the little shore town that his family goes to in Jersey, Jersey Shore. Okay. Um, which is you know, and actually I did some we actually did some recording with Sam and Zach. Went out there and did some recording and writing um, during okay. the winter time, like off season, which is really cool too. 
Right on. Okay. Well, shall we get into it? Yeah, let's go. All right. Naeem, Stone Harbor, live on KEXP at home. Nothing much to do So I decided to fall in love with you No ambitions, no drive I stand, you fly I wait for you every day And count the cars that cause my kids to stray No intentions, no strife You're here, I'm fine Nothing much to say Just stay there, baby I'll be on my way No convictions No lies A man You die Every word I read I think of you Every song I hear I think of you Every love I have I think of you I think of you I think of you In my way To comfort you and convince you to stay No restrictions, no lines I aim for you blind There was no time in the day To leave your side to do the things they say No allegiance, no ties I'm yours if you're mine Every word I've read, I think of you Every song I hear, I think of you Every love I have, I think of you I think of you Okay. Yo. We gotta talk about how you presenting how you presented <laughs> that song. You had the karaoke backdrop. How did you how'd you get that going? Yo, it's like one of the things I miss the most about, you know, everything being a lockdown is like not doing not being able to do karaoke. So mm. I never made music popular enough to have a karaoke song anyway. So I thought it'd be funny, you know, to make my mm. own karaoke so, you know, like so boom. So that's what we did. That's what's up. And um, I was already going to ask you, you know, how is pandemic influencing uh, rollout of the record? It probably, uh, you know, had something to do with even the recording process. I'm not sure when you finished recording it. Yeah. Um, recording was cool. We finished it before the pandemic, before Corona dropped, you know, so like mm -hmm. I, uh, it was just a rollout, which is kind of crazy because it had taken me so long to get to a point where, you know, the, the album was coming out and it was like really yeah. excited, you know? And then all of a sudden they were like, you can't do anything. You can't shoot videos. You can't, right. you know, go on tour. So all the things that, you know, I would normally do, and that, especially touring, I really love playing live. So 
all those right. things were out the window. But it's cool, you know, like whatever. I also like sitting on the couch and watching movies too. For sure. There, there is something about, you know, I, I'm like fantasizing about going to shows again and just kind of trying to do the math on how that even is going to work in the future. And uh, I'm not a touring musician. I've been on a few tours, but just the thought of that that immediate engagement being gone is so sobering, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm definitely, you know, I've been fond of like rolling around in the grass in Coachella, <laughs> you know, like so, For sure. um, you know, so it's different, but, you know, you got to be safe, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, it's like, what are we going to do? You know, you just do the thing you're supposed to do, you know, you stay safe, and then right. things will go back to being normal. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Sure. I think, you know. And uh, you had to shoot a video for the next song, Simulation. Um, you had to kind of make some go arounds because of COVID in the making of that video, right? Yeah, yeah. Me, me and a dude. We um, we just like I mean Scott's an amazing director, so mm -hmm. we just like had to sit and think about what we could handle with just the two of us, and it was stressful, man. Like he was like kind of bossing me around, and you know I was like it's <laughs> like he's like you know his PA, you know, so like I'm carrying things right. around and everything. Then I got to run into the to shot, you know, to perform. Right. So it was really uh, it was a trying time. Yeah, it's my partner. Yeah, so it right. was like so that's uh, extra. <laughs> Don't talk yeah, to me about like that, man. <laughs> exactly. We need to like all week, like <laughs> you know, right. some like mm -hmm. you know, meditation times to kind of like you know, like each other right. again. But we got we got through that. <laughs> and made a great, great video. Um, and I want to talk to you about this one a lot, uh, but I think we should get to it. So uh let's, let's say simulation by Naeem. Live and KHP at home. This one called Simulation. Peace to Justin Vernon, peace to Swamp Dog. Nothing is real, we in the hills, on four wheels, you in your fields, we in the building, we in here building, we stacking cash up like Legos, all of my hitters is Megalo, I'm pumping that petrol, and business is booming like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing is real, we in the hills, on four wheels, you in your fields, we in the building, we in here building, we stacking cash up like Legos, all of my hitters is Megalo, I'm pumping that petrol, and business is booming like, yeah, yeah. Jump out the coop, fresher than you Stuntin' on hitters like poop in these scoop Boy, I'm the truth, what they gon' do? Can't mess with the team, no, yo, we out of you Love the all polyamorous Except for the glamorous No ice on our wrist, we eat the rich Brain so good, I flip the whip So I set sail, see a semiotic So a sailor sinking, thinking he was walking Walking on the waves, saying he could save Sink his souls, really? He the one he need to Threw the ball of rope, pulled him on the boat Gave him breath again, till he slowly woke Kissed him on his lips, then I stood and cried This ain't rock and roll, this is patricide Nothing is real, we in the hills, on phone wheels, you in your fields, we in the building, we in here building, we stacking cash up like Legos, all of my hitters is Megalo, I'm pumping that petrol, and business is booming like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing is real, we in the hills, on phone wheels, you in your fields, we in the building, we in here build, we stacking cash up like Legos, all of my hitters is Megalo, I'm pumping that petrol, and business is booming like, yeah, yeah, yeah.
They cutting fun and locking up children and banning books. I'm popping bottles with dope boys that bought them till we shoot up babies like Sandy Hook. No truth to be found anywhere we look. Can't be caught in any bloke. Rushing bust like King Marble, these all cons, and I know all of my exit doors. All of my haters get X and notes. All of my maces on X and woke. All this out here starving, we go to heart of good D when we feed them these decibels easy. Easy is making the middle of a bill that you cut from a wheel. You could hold numbers on billboard and give out a polar show. I do not mess with you still. Facing all many realities. Even before the technology, I'ma keep poking these hitters. They woke on these hitters until they raise my mama's salary. Simulation. What up, Larry? Naeem. What's good? Chilling. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. I saw that you were talking about in the interview that that song was inspired by some of the stuff you're reading, including Grant Morrison's The Invisibles. That is very true. I had to to mention that because I'm a big Grant Morrison fan. I love The Invisibles. Um, Yeah, man. I was like the first, I don't, I'm don't, not like a comic book kid. And um, my yeah. friend, you know, told me I should read that. It was the first, first graphic novel I ever read. And, and it just blew my mind wide open. It was crazy. That's an ill one. Yeah. That's an ill one. Speak to me about the premise of that song. The song is about looking at like, you know, all the like atrocities that the, you know, people in power, institutions and government had, you know, like enact on, on people, inflict on people. And, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the laws that, that are made up or a lot of things that we have to deal with in life, whether certain people are like viewed as being, um, you know, innately better than the next person or, or, you know, people can't, you know, do certain things within the law. All this stuff is fiction, right? And so what I think Grant Morrison was saying is that like, since that is fiction, we can use our own fictions to then shape the world to be whatever we want it to be. So instead of being intimidated by uh, a dictator or intimidated by a president or a senator or, you know, intimidated by a police union, you know, everything that they're doing, everything that's scary to you is complete fiction. It's not set in stone, you know? So basically the stronger we are at our own creativity, the, you know, the more we have, like, to fight against, like, their fiction. So it's like a battle sure. of fictions, right? Whose fiction mm-hmm. is the strongest, you know? So that's what I mean. Right. That's why I was saying about nothing is real. It's like, none of that stuff is real, so you don't really have to fear it, you know? Especially if you've been, you know, creative on your own, right? For sure, you know, because everything is, is stories, and there's so much talk of now about <clears throat> controlling or flipping the narrative, you know? And having this fear-based narrative around the powers that be, you know, doesn't serve us. So writing a new story, especially in this time where, like, you know, nothing seems to be concrete anyway in this pandemic time, you know, is very encouraging to the, to see the power of of writing a new story. Yeah, definitely, man. And there's definitely some really smart people out on the streets, and you know, and being activated right now creating mm-hmm. creating a new story for all of us to live in and i really i love watching that i love seeing that absolutely and that song features an incredible combination of justin vernon from bon Vare and swamp dog <laughs> yeah which i love tell me how that came together man that came together just because uh you know ryan olsen who is a producer in Polisa and gangs Mm-hmm. Um, was really yeah. adamant about me moving out to Minneapolis and, and finishing the album. And so I did that. And that's just the world that they got out there. You know, Justin Vernon mm-hmm. has this beautiful space to work in Wisconsin. 
so many friends and family around all the time you know like mm -hmm. even meeting velvet negroni and having him be on that record too all this stuff happened just really like just because I, just because i went to minneapolis you know like i right you know I, I i had just learned about swamp dogs you know so to have them mm -hmm. on the on an album that quickly is crazy especially because um he has a, a song called synthetic world that I was listening to a lot. It helped me kind of finish some of the lyrics to Simulation. Um, oh, wow. And so it was kind of crazy that like, you know, like I was I was listening to him and, you know, writing yeah. trying to, and then, and then he ends up on it, but it's a, it's a direct, like I wanted to draw a line like directly to Swamp Dog, you know, and Synthetic okay. World, you know. That's a beautiful full circle experience, you know, that life is yeah. so full of. It had nothing to do with me though. I, I just found myself in, you know, in this magical land in, <laughs> in, yeah. in Minneapolis and Wisconsin that could make that happen. So right on. You had a line in there I love. You said, uh, this ain't rock and roll, this is patricide. Yes. Can you break that down for me a little bit, if you could. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the the I was referencing a line from David Bowie where he, he screams at the beginning of one of his songs. I forget what song, I keep forgetting what song it is. Um, I don't know, but anyway, he goes, this ain't rock and roll, this is suicide. Or genocide, this is genocide is what he says, you yes. know? And then, mm -hmm. and then I remember hearing that a long time ago and it really just kind of like had this lasting effect on me. I don't even know what the fuck, I never know what David Bowie talking about, you know? But like, right. I was like, man, that's, that's, that's some power right there. And, I was really happy to reference that and change genocide to patricide because a lot of the themes on the album right now is about um, killing your father's ideals, you know, mm -hmm. um, and really knowing how to, we have a lot of work to do to break ourselves from a lot of the oppression that, that, you know, our dad's generation has brought into this world. So, for sure, you know, that's what that line is all about. Right on. Okay. And oh, real quick, uh, yes. Yeah. Is, is, did the the Stratisha come out on? Um, is the label is that Justin Vernon's label? Yes, um, people. Or oh, I don't know if we even say people no more. We say like three seven D O three D, and um, and uh, yes, it's Justin Vernon and Aaron Bryce from uh, the Nationals. Their label. Dope. That's awesome. Okay. Um. Next up, we got the title track to your album. Startisha. Let's do it. Um, all right, let's get into it. Naeem, Startisha, live on KXP at home. Sometimes when I have time, I think of you and I wonder, do you still move this way? Some friends no longer move 
Listening. Star Tisha, the title track from Naeem's new record. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having you, me here. For sure. You changed your setup a little bit there. You were in the bedroom lounging. It wasn't the, the karaoke. Yeah, because that's because that's usually what I'm doing at home, just like, it's <laughs> right. just like lounging in bed, listening to music, you know? Right. So the subject of that song, Startisha, that, that's a childhood friend from Baltimore, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who I haven't you... seen since I was a child, so. Okay. What's the, the, you're referencing a certain, like, moment in time with this person. What was going on? Yeah, um, I don't know, I was probably like 12 or 13. Um, Startisha was probably like, I don't know, 11 or 10, something like that. She's my, she's my, my younger sister, Maya. She was uh, her, one of her best friends in the neighborhood. Okay. And she just, you know, she just like a real, Startisha had a really big, like really cool, wild energy. And she was always really fun to have around. Um, so it's just like a kind of like, a, uh, you know, like a coming of age kind of like moment, you know, just like, okay. you know, just adolescence and like puberty and just like you know thinking that you're cool you know 13 year old kids or you're okay thinking that they cool listening to snoop dog you know and then like you know and then being completely embarrassed um about how uncool and how ungrown up i i actually was at the time sure um i had read that the lyrics in that too are talking about talking about are I wonder are you still moving? You're talking about you know uh, friends you've lost in that same breath. Yeah, um, yeah. It's been I, I I just had a lot of um, close friends, you know, like people who were like I really like they were really helping me kind of like maintain my sense of self. Uh, I really relied on. Um, you know, R.I.P. to Blue Gems, R.I.P. to Pipus, R.I.P. to Bo Velasco, you know, like, and, you know, I, I, I needed, these are like my, my, like, you know, those people you really lean on. And so yeah. to, uh, to have this weird, weird experience where I just kind of lost so many friends in a very short period of time, um, it made me really feel, um, just in, you know, go through a complete existential crisis. I just started feeling really insecure about um, planning for the future um, and things like that. So um, it was. It's a the song is really about just feeling really like lucky um, to still mm -hmm. be able to kind of um, put some love into the world. You know, right on. Because I definitely I I thought I was gonna be the first first one of my friends to die straight up. <laughs> like I was like mm -hmm. wilding out. You know, like having a blast you know but and so you know getting over the you know getting over the hill um it's kind of funny because this is the first this is the first time ever you know definitely in my music where i actually reflected on the past and really in life i'm not someone who's really into um nostalgia or you know looking mm -hmm. into the past so but yeah this is uh me exercising that right 
and that's uh that's like i said that's the title track obviously is that was that at the genesis of, of your recording process for this record or did that come later yo that was the very very first song uh okay. wrote with um sam and zach um crave goods <laughs> um those they they did executive producers on the album okay. um they um they're philly yeah they they philly heads yeah mm-hmm. um zach's in berlin now but um when we were writing you know we we um i only wanted to work with them um and it was just gonna be it was i, I made it a point to just work with them in philly and I'll put them to the test with Star Teacher. I was like, yo, if they can make this song with me, then I'll, I'll do a whole album with them, you know? But they didn't know mm-hmm. I was testing them, but it was definitely a test. And they just like knocked it out of the box. And then, and then fortunately, you know, once we, once we took those demos to Minneapolis, we got some, uh, some extra little love on it, especially from mm-hmm. like CJ who's playing the horns on it. Um, and, uh, and and Justin is, I think maybe his voice is in the singing backups too. It was really it was really fun watching them. Man, just love the Minneapolis man. Love to everyone up there. They really just it was really fun watching them, listening to the music, and just adding the, these these right little things. You know, it was great. Yeah, that that moment of seeing your thing just kind of take flesh and and become become real, be bigger than you thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. I got a shout out. I see people uh, are, are shouting out where they're from in the comments, Minneapolis and Seattle, of course, Colorado, Portland, Maine, but also okay, PDX, Berlin, you know, yeah. Guatemala, Mexico, oh. Canada, Belgium. Man. Shout out to y'all. Thank you for being here. Yeah, for Brooklyn, sure. Y'all got Ireland. <laughs> This like the this is the this is a great big audience y'all got here, man. I really appreciate oh, yeah. you guys having me on. Most definitely, most definitely, especially since again you're rapping DMX. We're always gonna have room for DMX <laughs> representation. You had the the belly sweatshirt too. I <laughs> that, so it was double DMX. Yo, I know. Yo, I don't know. <laughs> yo, I don't know what's going on, man. But yeah, double DMX, yo, for sure. <laughs> What happened, Larry? We lost you. We lost you, Larry. What it said, it said my mic unplugged. I think oh, it was it's my show. Now. It's my show, Larry. Now get out of here. <laughs> Next guest, DMX. Coming up. Yeah, exactly. Man, if you brought out Earl Simmons right now, be <laughs> that's the energy we need. Yo, is that that's what you do at karaoke, huh? You do DMX at karaoke. I can see it now. If you can do DMX at karaoke, you deserve the trophy that night. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> oh, I see Sao Paulo's in the house. What's up? Love to see it. Yes, yes. And uh, we have one more track from you, and it's a cover. I loved when I saw what this was. (laughs) I don't think nobody going to know it. You want to speak to it a little bit? It's called A Little Bit of Love. A Little Bit of Love. I almost want you to speak to it, because you you said you got hype on it. Yeah. This is a new edition from 1986, I want to (laughs) say. And uh, this is the album right before Bobby Brown left and went solo. So they had a lot of creative tension, but it was a huge record. Uh, yeah, I remember this video and everything. Yo, I, I was- remember seeing them perform, I think on Soul Train or something. I was a huge New Edition fan because I'm my older sister. The first concert I ever went to was New Edition, probably 86, 87 maybe, somewhere around mm-hmm. that time. Um, yeah. Well, I wanted, I wanted to, yeah, a little bit of love. It's also my favorite New Edition song. It's not, Kind of not really one of their most popular songs, oddly yeah, enough. For sure. But um, I got my homie Rufio to flip the beat for me. So we're doing it in a little bit of a different style. Word up. Uh, Rufio, that's what's up, man. Say that. Okay, well, let's get into it. Naeem doing a little bit of love. KXP live at home. Hey, Rufio on that beat, Johnny. Let's go. You say you wanna be the one I need You say you wanna be the one for me You say you wanna be the one I need But then you go and act so crazy You say you never want to let me go You say you wanna be the one I hold You say you never want to let me go But then you go and leave me lonely Lonely 
Change my life, then maybe you should treat me kindly. You wanna make believe you never left. You wanna make believe I never went. You said you never ever leave again. Oh baby, won't you quit pretending? Pretender, pretending, pretender, pretending, pretender, pretending, pretending, pretending. And if you wanna make things right. <laughs> a bit of love. Hey, a little bit of love. Hold yeah. it down. <laughs> Shout out to fun. Ralph Tresvan. Shout out to Ralph Tresvan. Yes. Okay. That's what's up. Thank you for, for laying that down. Um, I wanted to shout out the homeboy, Micah James. I saw you got yes. Micah on the woo 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 with amanda blank that's that's a hey, right there. that's right yeah. micah man micah oh man micah is a beast i've been watching micah rap since since 2006 man <laughs> like the best just the best rapper i know you know yeah nah definitely it's, spits crazy so it's really awesome having micah getting micah on that track that's family though you know so it's like for sure that's good. I asked Mike, I was like, what, sh what should I ask Naeem? Oh, God. <laughs> he said, one, ask him about Dubois' Gospel of Pay versus Gospel of Toil. I don't know what that is. Okay. He's talking about W.E.V. Dubois. I know who Dubois He's, is. Okay. He <laughs> said, I'm always, I'm always curious what people think about their work in terms of effort and reward, and how can we ethically participate in these systems, i.e. the recording industry. Um. How can we imagine to work towards something radically otherwise? So he's asking about um, what, like, Mike is too damn smart. See, he out here throwing yeah, me a see. hard, like, academic questions. Me, yeah, I, I don't to give you that. I don't read that much, but I do want to answer this question. So what is so what is this this idea of uh, of like work? You're saying like we're working for. I guess basically the question is asking how to ethically participate in uh, an exploitive framework like the recording industry, you know, and how oh. that has played out for you and where you are at today. There's no way to do it ethically. I think what you do is you try to reduce how much, um, you know, how you try to re reduce how much damage you're doing. You know, and you try to, you have to set, you have to set board, you have to set, boundaries for yourself to say like what will you participate in and what you won't participate in but the thing is that like economy is is already wrapped up with so many like it's global you know right you don't know what dirt the next man is doing you know but right like i like i said like um 
you know, in Tiger Song, I'm like, you know, but you are who you company, you know? So it's just about mm -hmm. if you can try to bring a team around you that has the same, you know, values as you, then you reduce the amount of damage that you guys would do, um, you know, participating in the system. Um, but we're all connected, you know? And that's something that we all have to remember. There's no real such thing as like individuality. Um, and so the work is to, as you're, as you're sharing, as you're putting things out into the world, whatever you do, it doesn't have to be music, but anything, if you're being a nurse or whatever, you have to understand mm -hmm. that like, we are all affected by everyone's good and everyone's evils. Um, so the, the more you reduce the idea of individuality, um, the easier it becomes to do your work, knowing that your your work adds up to the greater good, you know. So I mean, right. it's like Star Wars, you know. <laughs> it's just that you simple, go. you know. You have the you have the you know you have the good side, you have the bad side, and, but it's all based on energy. It's an exchange of energy, is what it is. So mm -hmm. um, it is really hard to separate yourself from, um, you know, this this terrible exploitative industry. But the yeah. the more the more you have a good team around you, the easier uh, it becomes. Yeah, that's like a testament to uh, intentionality. Thank you for fielding that question from Mike. I see Mike in the comments. I now. love Micah so much. <laughs> he also said, Yo, I'm at, I'm also happy Naeem, it, "Oh yeah, what do you say? What do you say?" He said, "Get Naeem to say the word avocado." That was the other, <laughs> other question. How would say avocado? I say it normally. Okay. I say avocado. There you go. Well, is that weird? Is that strange? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. It's probably an accent joke. You know what I'm I am from Baltimore, but I, I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> I love it. Yo, Naeem, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. Appreciate the music. Thanks for, for, for linking up with this audience and doing this from, from the crib, you know? Yeah, thank you so much. I, I enjoyed my time with you, Larry. This is the best. Thanks for having me. Most definitely. All right, brother. Well, you have a good one. Peace out, KXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.